Come with me on a winter adventure. We're gonna climb to the crater rim of Mount St. Helens, ski off the summit, and I'll talk about what gear I'm bringing along to capture it, as well as how I'm carrying and using it. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson, and this is a really fun one for me to share with you all today. It kind of goes back to my roots in photography in the first place with creative kind of adventure storytelling, taking people on trips that they might never have imagined going on themselves or might not be able physically to go on themselves. So today I'm gonna to take you on a ski mountaineering trip to the top of Mount St. Helens. And along the way, I'll talk about the gear that I chose to take, kind of going on an ultra light creative trip like that. Uh, the, the format's gonna kind of be packing. I'm gonna go down in my garage, show you the procedure, what I chose to pack, how I'm packing it for that trip. Then I'm gonna show you a six minute video uh, that I threw together of the trip to just kind of take you on that adventure. And then I'll talk a little bit about how all the gear worked out that I decided to take with me and what my thoughts are kind of post-trip. It seems like every trip I go on, stuff's changed. I'm choosing different gear. I'm taking different, uh, different little bits and pieces. And so I'll talk about some lessons I learned in this particular trip. Uh, and as always, there's a chaptered table of contents in the video's description. I'll also put links to some of the tools that I used on this trip. Those, those links help me out. Uh, there's always links to everything that I use, updated at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. I wanna make sure that everybody has an opportunity to sign up for office hours on Tuesday, April 6th, 10 a.m. Pacific. We're gonna talk about travel. And I want you all that are signing up to submit your favorite travel image. We're gonna give away just some little swag to, to our favorites and go through some of those images. And also, instead of a question this time, submit a travel tip. These office hours are free. You can sign up to, to join us all on Zoom and participate. You can watch it on YouTube Live. It's archived on YouTube. Uh, but jump in, we're gonna talk about traveling. I'm launching a bunch of workshops. I'm planning some trips. I'm excited to get out photographing and traveling post-vaccination again. I hope everyone else is too. And I can't wait to get out collaborating with my friends and photographing in the wild again. All right, so let's jump in. Let's talk about what I'm taking on this trip. All right, everybody, Hudson here. Something kind of fun and different this week. I wanna take you on an adventure skiing up, backcountry skiing up. Mount St. Helens on a spectacular day. Tomorrow is supposed to be amazing. We've got a lot of fresh snow and then we're gonna ski off the summit. And I'm gonna talk about what gear I'm taking with me, how I'm carrying it, uh, how I'm using it. And you know, hopefully along the way, you'll get to share this whole adventure. Uh, it, we've got some just spectacular weather coming in tomorrow. I'm taking off at 3 a.m. So I'm here in my garage. I got my tarp laid out like I usually do for a trip like this so that I can just kind of keep everything in the blue square clean as I pack it. I'll show you what I'm taking. So for those of you who've been supporting this channel, sharing, like, and subscribing, thanks so much. There's, there's links to anything I talk about in the full description of the video, as long as it's a chaptered out table of contents with time codes you can click to watch or rewatch any part you're interested in. So this part in the garage should be the most dull and boring part of this video, unless things go horribly wrong. So I'm gonna walk through what I'm carrying with me. You know, of course I've got skis, skins, avalanche safety equipment, even though avalanche danger is low, extra clothes that I'll be layering up and down with, my backcountry ski boots, uh, kind of a special ski pole that's got a self-arrest axe attached to the handle. And I'm not taking a traditional camera bag. I want a really lightweight kind of made for backcountry skiing bag. I got my, my Patagonia Ascensionist bag here. It's really minimal. It weighs about a pound and a half. Uh, and inside, I've got the gear that I want with me on this trip. My main still in video camera for high quality is gonna be in this little MROC bag that protects it. This is an old MROC bag that I've had for years. And inside I've got my little Z50 on my Lumilab strap. I can really easily wear this Lumilab strap under my backpack harness or over the top and cinch it in tight so that it just rides kind of on my chest when, when I'm climbing and wanting to use it. When I'm skiing down, I'll keep it protected in the bag from impacts and stuff. And all I'm taking is the, the little amazingly good 16 to 50 kit lens that comes with this camera. This is just a, a really surprisingly good camera, especially in high contrast, like I'm likely to have out in the snow on a bluebird day. You know, to accompany this, I've got a spare battery, a bunch of lens wipes. Um, it'll start out in my bag because we'll be in the dark with headlamps, uh, but uh, it'll be ready to go whenever the light gets good and the views get beautiful. To accompany it, I've got tons of lens wipes, as I said, you know, and, and uh, microfiber cloths. I'm also bringing a polarizer and a step-up ring, and all I've got is 82 
I carry 82 millimeter filters because most of my lenses are so big. That or 112 millimeters for the 14 to 24 uh, S lens that I'm filming this with. So I'm just taking one polarizer. That's the only filter I could see using. I'm not taking a tripod. I'm not going to be there overnight and we're going to be moving and I'm going light. I do have this kind of spare one size fits all stretchy rubber lens cap in case I lose a lens cap. I like to have that along just because I don't want to damage a filter or a lens if I lost it. You know, another thing I've got in here, I'm bringing my little GoPro Hero 8. It's not the latest one, it's the second to the latest one. It doesn't have the little forward facing camera, but it takes amazing 4K video and its microphone's really good. If I want to do any blogging, talking to you guys on the mountain, I'll probably have this just tucked in a pocket. It's got a little neck strap. And then kind of the exciting thing, the thing I'm most excited to get out and use and, uh, and play around with is my Skydio 2 drone. And I want to get some footage climbing the mountain. If we don't have too much wind or conditions get weird, if there is predicted light wind, beautiful day, I'd like to fly it when we get up on the crater rim and get some big scenics of us up on that spectacular spot. In this little case, I got two batteries. It's about 55 minutes of flight time. And I'm also carrying a little GPS beacon that this thing links up with and it just automatically follows you. And that kind of forms the front part of my pack. So I've got it, everything in here, crampons for my boots, crampons for my skis, extra warm hat gloves, some food, stuff like that. I can cram other things in there, like when I take the skins off my skis, they can go in on the top and pile this thing full with my camera and everything, food and ski down. I've got some avalanche gear that can go in this outer pocket. It's gonna be a great adventure. I can't wait to show you what this trip's like. I do this every year and it's one of the things I look forward to the most. All right, so first thing, I cut together a bunch of the footage from the trip. I'm actually out cross country skiing with my family the next day, uh, but I've got a little six minute video to just kind of show you what it's like to climb Mount St. Helens and ski it. And I've put together footage from all the different cameras, as well as my cousin Don and my buddy Trevor's footage. And you'll see what camera I was using right here if you just take a look. This is pretty much the best moment.
All right, so I hope you, uh, you had a good time just kind of following along on that trip. It, it was an amazing, amazing ski mountaineering trip. It was just a great group of people. Uh, my cousin Don, my cousin Tom Philbrick, my new friend Mark, my good friend Trevor Seaton. Uh, we all had an absolute blast. And, you know, it was, a, it was a different group of tools I took along with me. I'm really glad I chose to bring the little GoPro. This is my, uh, my Hero 7. I probably will think about a Hero 9 or a Hero 10 at some point, but this thing does amazingly nice, smooth, digitally image stabilized video. And, and I found that, you know, the difference between the Pixel Phones video and the Google and the uh, GoPro Hero 7's video, and I'm sure the 8 and 9 are just the same kind of story, is that in really good light, this thing just produces really fine 4K video. Um, and I liked, I liked being able to just have it around my neck with this lanyard, with this little case. I'll put a link to it in the video's description. And just be able to pop it up and tap the button. I have it set to just record 4K video, turn itself on, record 4K video until I tap the top button again and it shuts itself off and gives me a series of beeps and I just let it drop and dangle. You know, um, in the earlier morning light, I found that in the low light situation, my Google Pixel 5 did a nicer job for video and stills. And the Pixel does spectacular stills. I liked its stills better than I like the GoPro still. So you can see I did a lot of video in the, the bright light of the day with the GoPro. I did a lot of stills with the Pixel camera. I probably used my, my phone more than I used anything just because it's so convenient to have in your pocket pick up and shoot. And there's such good quality cameras, particularly for wide angles or portrait rendered scenes at this point. Really, I'd say the only time that I popped out the Z50 was when we were stopped and it was really convenient to dig it out of the bag because most of the time you want to be taking those wide angle frames anyway. Um, and I was really glad that I brought the 82 millimeter uh, case magnetic uh, polarizer. It's just when you're up in beautiful sunlit conditions midday, shooting either to the north or to the south, uh, the polarizer just says such beautiful things to the sky. So just being able to spin that magnetic polarizer on there. I used a step up ring. This lens is actually like 40, two or 46 millimeter filter thread. So a giant step up ring to 82 and a magnetic case, 82 millimeter circular polarizer and cap it was just great, great little kit. And the images that I got from the Z50, you know, early in the morning when the sun first rimmed up and I wanted to capture a sun star of it with people in the backdrop, you know, there, there's no way to do that with a cell phone camera or a GoPro. Uh, you, need, you need a quality optical lens. And believe it or not, the little 16 to 50 kit lens throws a pretty nice sun star and handles contrast and real strong backlight like that really, really well. Um, so shooting that and then just, you know, running around up on the crater rim, taking the highest quality camera I can, more megapixels and just better detail and better resolution and contrast through this, through this viewfinder, particularly using it with a polarizer versus without a polarizer. All right. Um, the other thing that I think was just critical when it comes to still photography and the, the handheld video stuff was just having a bunch of these little lens cloths in hand, good quality microfiber lens cloths. I'll put a link to my favorite ones. And you know, the minute that I pick up the GoPro, just fish it out of my pocket and wipe the end. Cause you're getting sweat, you're getting sunscreen, uh, just stuff from bouncing around, schmutz from your jacket, snow uh, on your cell phone too. Remember to keep that cell phone's lens clean. Um, certainly looking at your camera lens. And then if anybody is buying a Skydio drone, the drone's just amazing in the way that it follows the subject autonomously. You know, I had that drone set to just follow me down the mountain and I could use this little GPS beacon. I think if anybody buys the Skydio, you gotta get the GPS beacon. It increases the range and if the drone visually loses you, it just resets, comes back, finds the GPS signal from this beacon and relocks into you through that. So it's a really, really cool tool. Plus you can just sort of set what position you want it, what mode you want it in, what distance you want from it through this without ever even pulling out your phone or a controller. This can just control the drone. And you can even learn how to land the drone and, and fly it with this thing. So a really, really cool thing. The Skydio drone's amazing. There's a long waiting, waiting list for them. One last I checked, but I'll put a link to that in the video's description too. Whoa, I almost completely forgot major Two disclaimers from last week's video where I was talking about that Nisi 15 millimeter F4 Sunstar lens. Nothing about the lens, the lens is amazing. 
but about my wife feeding the birds when we were cross-country skiing with our kids. The first and most important disclaimer comes from Elizabeth Brooke, good friend, uh, a workshop regular here. She pointed out as a bird rescue volunteer that feeding birds snack foods or bread is actually really bad for them. It, it fills their stomach, they love it, but it has no nutritional value and then they're not out getting nutritional food that they need. Um, so make sure that you feed wild birds appropriate food. We'll be taking seeds when we're out cross-country skiing in the future. And that even goes for ducks at the pond, which is a real shocker to me. Second point a number of people brought up to me is those are not nutcrackers. They're Canadian Jays. You're completely right. Someone told me they were nutcrackers years and years ago. Might have been a parent, but for decades I've been spreading misinformation about the name of those birds. Thanks so much to everybody for pointing that out to me. It actually is good to be armed with proper knowledge. And Elizabeth, that's a great note about feeding the birds, and I hope everyone takes that to heart. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the adventure. If you have any questions about carrying gear out in the field, hit me up. I honestly think, you know, it used to be I always had a camera in my chest pack, but these days the cell phone is so good, and the GoPro is so good. I just found myself not pulling the Z50 out of the bag that much. It's still something I want with me, but... You know, you, you, you find yourself using your phone and something like a GoPro an awful lot and being really happy with the results these days. All right, everyone. So hit me up for office hours, April 6th. There's a little bit of time still. Sign up. Uh, tell us whether you want to be on YouTube live or on Zoom interactive with us. Submit your favorite travel photo, just one, please, and uh, give us a travel tip, and we'll talk travel. All right, everybody. See you next week.